My life will never be the same because of one night. I was driving home from a friend's house, located on the outskirts of the city. As far as my eyes went, I could only see vast cornfields on both sides of the road. My house was still 40 minutes away, and I could hear the angry rumble of my stomach. But I couldn't see any sign of a house or people until I took a left turn for a shortcut. The scenery was different after this turn. Now the cornfields were substituted by deep woods. Hooting owls and howling coyotes reminded me that I'm too far from home in the middle of the night. I didn't want to stop no matter how hungry I felt, so I kept on driving for a few kilometers straight. But then I saw this McDonald's drive through and I knew I had to stop. I drove straight into the queue passages, which had no other cars, and stopped right next to the window. A skinny teenage boy was dozing off, sitting on the counter. I honked my horn twice, and he woke up with an awkward face. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I was just... Relax, man. No problem. I get it. It's okay to be tired. He smiled and asked for my order. I'll have a Big Mac with one small fries and an iced tea. Okay, give me some time to get back with your food. Saying this, he went inside the restaurant to prepare the meal. I figured out this outlet is short-staffed, so the boy is in charge of everything tonight. I sat quietly, waiting for my meal, but then the urge to pee hit me right away. I came out of the car and went to use the public toilet located in the corner of the drive through I was about to close the door when I noticed a guy dressed as Ronald McDonald sitting on a bench at some distance. He had a sad face and was staring at the ground like he was about to cry. Suddenly, he looked up and our eyes met. A weird smile appeared on his face. His teeth were broken in places, making his smile way more horrible. His eyes were big, yet drowsy. He had a hypnotic stare that made me very uncomfortable. His face was so bony that I could see his cheekbones gushing out of his skin. I couldn't move, and he just watched me for a few seconds. And then he stood up, retaining that same creepy smile, and started to jog, standing in the same place. What a creep. Saying this, I closed the toilet door on his face. I was doing my business when I heard a muffled sobbing sound. The sound wasn't very loud, but it was surely spooky enough. Is that guy crying? What the hell is wrong with that dude? Suddenly the sound stopped, and silence prevailed. I turned towards the door, pondering what I would see when I opened it, and a loud bang took place, almost giving me a heart attack, followed by a familiar voice. Sir? S sir, are you in there? I opened the door and saw it was that skinny teenager standing outside with a big packet in his hand. Your food is ready. I caught out to you, but... Yeah, I, I had to take a leak. He handed me the food and we both walked to my car. I was taking out the cash from my wallet to pay him when I noticed the bench where that Ronald guy was sitting a few minutes back. It was empty and the guy was nowhere to be found. Seeing me checking out the bench, the boy asked, Is anything wrong, sir? Nothing like that. It's just, your Ronald McDonald guy is pretty creepy. He would scare the kids away. What Ronald McDonald guy? The man who is sitting here a few moments back, wearing your mascot costume? I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. We don't have anyone like that here. I'm all this place has got. A cold shiver ran down my spine as he said that. I paid him quickly and without much ado, got back on the road. The confused boy watched me drive away in a hurry. I rolled the windows down to get some fresh air. Some crazy man creeped me out and looked at me, and I was being all childish about it. I felt humiliated by my cowardly behavior. The boy must be laughing on his own now, seeing a guy double his age get scared of some stupid mascot. I went to turn on some music to take my mind off of everything. But before I could press the button on my music player, a squeaky laugh came from the back seat. I could feel my heartbeat getting faster. Drops of sweat appeared on my forehead as I slowly looked at the rearview mirror. A dark, shadowy figure was sitting in my back seat. It was a man with a curly red wig on his head. He slowly surfaced from the darkness 
and the passing streetlights illuminated his face. That same wide but drowsy eyes, a red painted big smile was watching me. I was so freaked out that I forgot to scream. A cold, sharp, metallic thing touched my neck as the creepy Ronald leaned close to me. <laughs> you shouldn't have closed the door on me, mate. What? What do, you, what do you want? I want to show you how sharp this knife is. Hand me your iced tea. Come on, do it, do it! Okay, uh, okay. Okay. I handed him my cup of iced tea. The situation was tense. I couldn't speed up, fearing that he would definitely slit my throat, and none of my loved ones would ever discover my body. So I decided to handle the entire situation very carefully. I didn't want to do anything reckless to make this psycho snap. He placed the cup right on my shoulder, and then moved the knife swiftly. The knife was so sharp that it cut the bottom of the cup like butter and the cold tea spilled all over my clothes. Oh my god. <laughs> he laughed his heart out while I almost shat my pants. I said in a fumbled voice, Look, mister, I, I am- Call me Ronald! Yes, yes, Ronald. I I'm sorry for disrespecting you earlier. Please, please forgive me. That's a good start. So just tell me where to drop you, and I will. N no issues. Oh, are you trying to get rid of me? No. No, 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 no. Drive quietly. I'll tell you where to stop. Okay, uh, okay, whatever you say. Good boy. <laughs> I kept driving, and Ronald watched me while smiling like a lunatic the entire time. We came near a right turn, and Ronald screamed. That's it! Stop right there, and then we will both get out of the car. It will be a night full of so much fun! <laughs> I slowed the car down near the turn. I knew deep in my heart that if I got down there with this psycho, I'm probably never going back home. I have to do something to save myself. I kept trying to think of a way to fool him and get away with my life when he yelled again. Are you going to stop? Or should I make you? No, no, I'll stop. I slowed the car down, but didn't turn off the engine. He opened the back door, and as soon as he stepped outside, I put the car in gear to speed away. But instead of the first gear, I put the car in reverse out of panic. As I pressed the accelerator hard, the car moved backwards at a sudden speed and bumped into the man standing there, not expecting this sudden turn of events. He fell to the ground, and I couldn't stop myself from hitting him once more. The left tire ran over his leg, breaking all the bones in his limb. I could hear the cracking and his dying scream all together. Ah, ah, eat shit, you freak! I screamed at him and drove away without wasting a single more second. The guy was so evil that even after losing his entire leg, he still got up and in a very freaky way, tried to chase my car, supporting his body on his one good leg. His smile grew even bigger as he chased me like a zombie. Before my car went away from his sight, I heard his loud voice echoing in the night, screaming. I'm Ronald McDonald! No one gets away from me! <laughs> I can't explain how I got home that night, but after that day... I stopped going to McDonald's forever. Working in customer service is not easy. Since I've been working at McDonald's, I've encountered all kinds of customers. Many of them take a long time to order and delay the line. Others get angry for the craziest reasons. From the first day, we are taught to deal with all kinds of people, but nothing could prepare me for what I experienced that day. It was a Tuesday afternoon, and my shift had just started. I had to work in the drive through which is usually much quieter, so the day had not started badly. Customers were coming in very slowly, and I was a bit bored, until I heard a request that caught my attention. Good afternoon, sir. May I take your order? Yes, I want three hamburgers. Uh, v very well, sir. What kind of hamburgers? I, I don't care. I just want a hamburger. This person seemed a little angry about my question. He seemed desperate for those hamburgers. 
Okay, sir. How about three Big Macs? Y yes th that's perfect. Do you want them in a combo? No, I told you I just want the burgers. I need them. Some of my co-workers were laughing hard at this guy, but I couldn't help but feel a little uncomfortable. As his car moved forward, I did my best not to grimace. The man was short and slightly overweight, but his appearance was disgusting. His whole face was covered in sauce. His hair was so long and greasy that he chewed his bangs with his teeth. I could see how his clothes were shredded and parts of his body were showing through. The disgusting man opened the window and a horrendous smell almost made me vomit. I thought he might be offended by this, but he didn't pay me the slightest attention and spoke to me. Take the money, and do you have my food? With some distaste, I took his money. Sir, this is much more than- I want my fucking food! Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, take it. Handing him the burgers, he almost didn't take the paper off them as he began to devour them savagely on the spot. A part of me wanted to turn away, but I couldn't help but watch, mesmerized, as he smashed the burgers into his mouth and proceeded to chomp down on them at an impressive speed. Sir, can you eat somewhere else, please? Another car may come. He ignored me and just kept eating. Sir, uh, I'm talking to you. W would you please move your car forward and leave? When I found no answer, I quickly went to my manager, who told me that since there was no security that day, I should go with two more colleagues to knock on his window. I was a little hesitant, but my boss was somewhat authoritarian, so I knew I had no choice. I told two of my colleagues and we went out to the front door. So we're gonna have the privilege of meeting the hamburger maniac. <laughs> what do you mean, have you met him before? Everyone on the night shift knows him. The lunatic just comes in, eats his burgers in the car and leaves. Looks like he got hungry a little early today. Well, is he dangerous? He gave me a really bad vibe. Nah, he's harmless. When I got to his car, I didn't even get to knock on his window. The man was gone. When I said he was leaving after lunch, he usually takes the car with him. Seems like today he was in a hurry. We started to check his windows, but there was no sign of him. Confused, we went back to our manager, who said he would handle things from now on. I figured he would send a tow truck if the owner didn't show up. But to tell you the truth, I wasn't interested. I was just glad not to deal with that lunatic anymore. I was on my way back to my post, but on the way, I heard something that caught my attention. Some very strange noises were coming from the storage room. I recognized that noise as that of an animal eating. So I went through the door with some curiosity. What I saw would leave me shocked. The man in the car was behind the door. He was sprawled on the floor with his shirt off, eating medallions of raw hamburgers. When I saw him, I felt like I was gonna throw up. The maniac grabbed four hamburgers at a time and stuffed them all together in his mouth. The raw minced meat joined in his hand, forming a mass of food that he swallowed desperately, no matter how much of it landed on his hairy body. I couldn't stand the urge any longer and threw up on the floor, falling to my knees. When I was finally able to recover, I raised my head again and the lunatic was in front of me, staring at me and concentrating on my presence for the first time. You're coming to eat too? I couldn't answer him as I was still shaken after the vomiting. I tried to get up, but it was useless. The man pushed me to the floor and sat on my belly. What the fuck, man? Get off of me! Without answering me, he started smiling with a devilish look on his face. And just as he did, he revealed that he had more medallions of raw hamburger in his hand. What are you doing with that? G get away from me! Easy, there's enough for both of us. <laughs> Having said that, he stuck his hand full of raw meat in my mouth. I was choking. I moved my hands desperately trying to hit him to get the food out of my mouth, anything that could free me from that situation. The man lunged at me and proceeded to bite my face like I was one of those hamburgers. I frantically punched him, but he didn't react. He just kept pressing me with his teeth. I felt like I was going to die. That lunatic was going to eat me alive and I would never even know why. I heard a scream behind me, and as fast as it started, the man stopped biting me and fell to my side, wounded. I looked up, and one of my co-workers was behind me, breathing heavily with a broken broomstick in his hand. 
The maniac recovered from being hit by the broomstick and lunged at me again, but my partner had already pulled me out of the storage room and closed the door. Somebody help us! Luke is hurt! Man, is that the hamburger maniac? Are you alright? Without answering him, I spit all the raw meat out of my mouth and breathed easier again. Within seconds, all our co-workers were there, helping me and looking for a way to cover the wound on my face while the ambulance was coming. I managed to stand up on my own, and while I was covering my face, I noticed that many of my colleagues were looking at the window of the storage room. What's going on? Uh, what are you doing? Dude, you have to see this. I looked out the window, and the man was at the back of the storage room eating a raw hamburger. The difference was that now he had a lot of hamburgers wrapped around his body, and as he was eating them, he was looking at the window suspiciously, as if the employees were trying to steal them. Shortly thereafter, the police took the man, who was behaving more like a wild animal than a human. Shortly after leaving the hospital, I went back to work, but I wasn't there for long. Every time I saw a hamburger medallion, I wanted to vomit. In the short time I was there, I heard all kinds of rumors. The calmer ones said he was a lonely man who was extremely stoned, but other rumors said he was a cannibal who escaped from a Satanist ritual with a hunger for human flesh. I was never interested in hearing any explanation of who this man was. It was enough that every time I saw myself in the mirror, I would remember the marks he left on me for life. Most of the time, it's the big, deliberate decisions that change your life. But sometimes, the smallest situations, those that you considered insignificant, end up having an impact you could have never imagined. When I was a teenager, I lived with my parents. Since they both worked, I usually stayed home alone until late. So they gave me money, either to buy food and prepare it or go out to eat somewhere. One afternoon, I decided to go eat at McDonald's the closest fast food place to my home. As always, I walked to the restaurant. On this occasion, I was alone, but sometimes my friends accompanied me. The truth was that I didn't mind being without them, since I had gotten used to being alone. Once I got into that McDonald's, I realized that for some reason it was quite crowded, so the line to order was very long. Still, I decided to stay there and wait, since I wasn't really that hungry. I want a Big Mac combo, please. I heard people order their food while waiting. I'm a double with hash browns. But at some point, I got bored, so I took out my earbuds, connected them to my cell phone, and started listening to music on Spotify. Still, I was alert. After a few songs, it was finally the turn of the girl in front of me. As she started to order her food, I noticed something. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a huge person stop right next to me, on the left side of the line. But I didn't really care. Hey, you, boy. Since I wasn't paying attention and was listening to music, I didn't hear the man. I'm talking to you, kid. This time he spoke louder, so I took off my left earbud and turned my head to see him. Huh? The person was a tall man, overweight but with arms that seemed strong. His beard was long and unkempt, as was his appearance. The man looked at me for a moment and then demanded, Move! Uh, what? I told you to move! Uh, it, it's my turn, sir. You... I don't care, boy. Don't you understand? Move or I'll move you. I stood there, still, for a few seconds. A bad feeling began to grow inside me as I realized the man's fists had tightened. Was he trying to threaten me? Why me? Just because I was a teenager? No. Wait your turn like everyone else. I won't let you take mine. I I'm hungry. Suddenly, the man grabbed one of my arms tightly and moved closer to me. If you don't move, I'm gonna rip your guts out, kid. His breath smelled so horrible that I wanted to pull away immediately. But he wouldn't let me as he held me tighter. I could even feel his nails hurting me. Being close to the man... I could see his rotten teeth, as well as the remains of food in his beard. It was disgusting. Was I clear? His eyes, which had red veins, were wide open. What the heck? 
At this point, I couldn't help but be scared. It sounded like the man was really going to do what he said, just because of me not letting him cut in line. Sir, what are you doing? I turned my head to see who had spoken. The cashier. Finally, my turn. Aren't you ashamed of taking so long? The man let go of me, so I could see what he had done to my arm. It was red and had purple marks where his fingernails had been. Excuse me, sir, but I think it was the boy's turn. It wasn't, was it? I I want a Big Mac combo. Of course, I wasn't going to let that man get what he wanted after he hurt me. Okay. And sir, please don't try to cut in line again. Fucking kidding me. The man turned and, passing me by, said, Piece of shit. I ignored him, paid for the food, and waited for it to be ready. Once the order was handed to me, I went to sit down. Already very hungry, I grabbed the Big Mac and started eating, but I couldn't help feeling a sense of discomfort. When I looked in front of me, I realized why. That man was staring at me. He didn't seem noticeably upset, but the look on his face... It seemed as if he was going to lose control any second. I felt a chill run down my spine. I couldn't continue eating like that, so I sat on the chair in front of me. And that way, the man could no longer see me directly. I continued eating quietly until, suddenly, some complaints began to be heard. This is not what I ordered! It was that man's voice. I'm sorry, sir. We... Sorry? <laughs> you did it on purpose, bitch! You did it because I tried to cut in line, didn't you? You fucking whore! Unsettled, I turned around to see what was happening. All because of that piece of shit? The man was pointing at me. Sir, we won't tolerate insults. Oh, so now this is a goddamn church. Fucking bitch, I should beat the shit out of you. Get out of here. I didn't want this shit anyway. The man threw his burger at the woman and then walked out of the McDonald's. Almost immediately, people started whispering about what had happened. I looked at the cashier, who was being helped by one of her co-workers. I am glad he left. He was out of control. Did you hear him? That's when I realized that I was hyperventilating. I was terrified, and it hadn't even happened to me. But just thinking about the threats the man had told me. Uneasy, I finished my burger. It was 5.32 p.m. when I left the place, so it was already beginning to get dark. I started to walk in the direction of my house, but soon I began to hear footsteps behind me. You took your time, kid. When I heard the voice, I stood still, frozen like a statue. It was that man again. Did you enjoy your food? My heart was beating fast. He was totally out of his mind. Had he really waited for me? I didn't. Because of you, little piece of shit. I started hyperventilating again. My vision became blurry. I was terrified. Are you scared, fucking kid? Suddenly, a strong punch to my back made me fall. The next thing I knew, that man had turned me around and was starting to hit me. I told you, didn't I? I'm gonna rip your fucking guts out. Over and over, the man punched me in the face. I tried to push him away, but he was too heavy. Soon, I began to feel my face swell, the blood coming out. At one point, I even heard a crack and a strong pain in my nose. Luckily, that afternoon, some people who were in the surrounding area managed to help me. Otherwise, I would have died at the hands of that man. Of course, he left my face smashed and swollen. He managed to break my nose, my lips. That was a key point in my life, because I realized that there are brutal, uncontrollable people out there.